Hey, it's Johnny from Focus Camera, and I'm here today in our Brooklyn studio with Sigma's new 150 to 600 millimeter ultra telephoto sports lens. Some of you may recognize this lens from its DSLR counterparts. However, this lens is specifically engineered for mirrorless full frame cameras. It's compatible with L and E mount. Our goal here today is to get a hands-on feel for this lens and tell you guys our first impressions of it. But before we do that, I want to tell you a little bit about the lens and what you get when you purchase this bad boy. So the first thing you'll see when you open the box is its own dedicated lens bag. I really like that Sigma included this because a lens of this size doesn't fit in every camera bag. So having its own travel case really ensures that you can keep it secure and makes it easy to transport. You'll also see that the lens comes with a very well-made lens cover, a lens cap, and a lens hood that screws in nicely. Regarding the lens itself, it's a very solid aluminum build that actually allowed them to make it 27 ounces lighter and one inch shorter than the DSLR counterpart. You'll also notice some nice features on the lens itself. The most important in my opinion is the new zoom torque switch which allows users to lock the lens zoom. You also have a tight option which adds mild resistance to your zoom and a smooth option. I think a lot of complaints Sigma got with their older version was how long the zoom took. But now with the smooth option you can really go from 150 to 600 in one clean motion. Another key switch you'll find on the lens is the optical stabilization. You can have it in the off position or position one, which is the general stabilization or switch it to two, which is for panning. There's a custom switch, which you can have in the off position, C1 or C2. And of course your classic autofocus and manual focus switch. So before even taking this lens out, I'm already liking what I'm seeing, but enough talk. Let's get some hands-on experience and go to the park. I'm out here in Dumbo testing out Sigma's new 150 to 600 millimeter sports lens. We're gonna go out and we're gonna shoot some sports like soccer, maybe catch some jet skis and helicopters in the process. Don't forget to hit that like button below and follow us at Focus Camera TV. So we're here at the park and I got the 150 to 600 Sigma on the A7 III. We're gonna test it out, get some action shots with my friend Chris and see what this lens can do. Recording into the monitor so you guys will be able to see exactly what I'm seeing. Let's see if we can get them to punt the ball up and get some more fast moving shots. There was a cool shot there. What I was going for was the one world trade and getting him just at the bottom of the frame, testing the ball and I thought that would be a cool shot, but I'm not sure if I got it. We'll have to wait till we go into the studio and check it. It's really hard when you're focused, uh, when you got a, you know, 600. <laughs> I mean, look how long that lens is. So when you're, sh when you're pretty close to them and you're trying to capture everything and it can be difficult, the slightest movement, he's out of frame again. So, you know, that's something to get used to when shooting with these long lenses. I'm going to switch it over actually to shutter priority and just change it to one, uh, one one thousandth of a second just so I know that I'm going to get it in focus and I'm going to it's going to be sharp on whatever I'm I'm pointing at. B, B. <laughs> so it's about seven o'clock right now. It's the golden hour. I'm gonna be shooting directly into the sun. We're gonna be testing out the lens flaring and just see how it does. I have the lens hood on right now, so it should help out a little bit. Let's go try it.
Yeah, I'm just getting some silhouettes basically of these locks. I think they're pretty cool. We're at F11 and still getting a lot of great bokeh. After a long day of shooting here in Brooklyn, we're gonna go back to the studio and check out what we got. I think we got a lot of good footage and shots. Here's a few images of first shooting the ball and Alex making the save. What you can really notice here is how important it is to have your shutter speed a uh, high rate when uh, shooting action. If you look in the back, a close up of maybe the net or where it says field two, um, you can see everything's really sharp. As you move over to Alex who's making the save, you can see uh, he's still pretty sharp. Uh, and as you move closer to where the ball is, the ball's a little more blurry. That's because it wasn't fast enough. However, uh, Chris was shooting the ball very hard. So, so this shot was taken at about half field and you can really see the compression here too as Chris is at the top of the goalie box and Alex is right on the goal line. Uh, it looks like Chris is almost in the goal. Being able to capture an image at 150 millimeters where you get a couple players in as well as the goal and then being able to zoom in and get a close-up of a keeper saving or the player doing a, a, a move and just getting the ball with his feet and um, there's some really cool shots you can get fully zoomed in and then quickly be able to just zoom out. That's why I like keeping it on the smooth when I'm actually shooting the action and then just zooming out really quick, getting the full goal, getting a scene like this. So this is another shot of jet skis we took. They were also very far away. We shot it at 600 millimeters and you could really see the detail in the water. We shot this one a lot faster of a shutter speed at 1 800th of a second. And you can see it still was not fast enough to freeze the water 100%. I would suggest shooting over a thousand minimum, maybe even a little closer to 1500 of a second to really freeze that water in, in frame and get the most you can out of the, the details. Shooting into the sun, I usually notice a lot of the chromatic aberration in, in the lenses. This is a perfect example if you zoom in around the lock to see how well this lens performs. Also shooting at 150 millimeters directly into the sun, you can look around and notice the improvement that this lens has being able to minimize this chromatic aberration. And I thought it did a really good job. All right guys, I had a lot of fun shooting with this lens. I was really impressed with the improved features of the lens. I'm also really happy with the improved image quality from 150 millimeters all the way up to 600 millimeters. It's such a wide range of focal distance to be able to maintain that sharpness throughout. I'm really impressed with that. The lens is $1,500, so it's a great lens for people starting off in sports photography, a hobbyist, or you're a parent and you wanna shoot your children playing soccer or football. I'm really happy with Sigma and how they're embracing the movement towards mirrorless cameras, making their lenses lighter and smaller, especially when you're dealing with such a beast of a lens like this. I just wanna give a special thanks to Sigma for allowing me to test out this lens. I had a great time and thank you all for watching. Please remember to drop a like below and follow us at Focus Camera TV. Until next time, see you later. I'm out.